The idea of what I'm gonna talk about is we wanted to hear from you. What is it that you folks have been dealing with for the last 12 months? What are the challenges that you all have faced? How have you addressed those challenges? Which of the strategies, the things that you put in place work for you? And then what are you gonna look, how are you looking at 2023? I do a lot of surveys, you know, that's, that's my job at CDK. Um, Jeff introduced me as the research senior director. I call myself the marketing geek or the market research geek. Um, and we've done a number of surveys for truck folks. Um, but again, it's the idea, at least from my point of view, what you should take away from this is the idea of, again, learning from each other. Whenever I go to events like this, I always really am big on networking, talking to other folks, finding out what they did. Uh, and then what we're going to show you is what over 100 folks that answered our survey did about 2022 and how they see that in 2023. And, and whatever challenges, I mean, the uncertainty is certain, whatever challenges that we're going to be facing in 2023 and 24, you're, much, you're in much better shape to deal with those. All right, so I've never driven a truck, I've never worked on a truck, I've never owned a truck, et cetera. I'm, again, the market research geek, we have to think about how are we going to learn from you all. We started out by doing what we call secondary research. You know, we went and read some trade publications, talked to folks like Jeff, um, and then we switched over and actually um, did some phone calls with you all, um, maybe an hour, hour and a half, to again understand those challenges and how you address those challenges. And that gave us the ability to put together a survey which we sent out um, not only to CDK uh, customers, but folks that are using other systems as well. Um, got some responses back, but that's what we're going to look at. Uh, and then we followed up, once we learned some of the insights, we followed up with some uh, more in depth interviews to just kind of help us ground ourselves in the data. So let's go ahead and see what we learned. Um, one thing real quickly, uh, again, how is this, how are our findings broken up? Again, what are the key challenges in 2022? How did you respond to those challenges? Generally, what worked? What happened? What came out of those? How you address those challenges? Um, what were the impacts of making those changes? What were the big operational impacts of the changes? What were the big financial impacts of the changes? Um, and then what changes that you made worked out that you plan to keep in 2023? How, do you, how are you looking at 2023? And what, kind of, what are you gonna keep and what are you going to add to that? And then lastly, um, what kind of help do you need from your OEM partners and from your technology partners such as CDK? All right, so we heard from uh, 134 folks. Um, this is the composite of what we heard. We did the survey through in February, so it's pretty recent information. Let's just kind of break down and look at who we uh, heard from. And the, the only point really of this is that, you know, we heard from a good mix of folks. And as a, you know, quite frankly, we consider this statistically significant. You know, we got a good spread, both from department heads and store leaderships. We heard from folks in Canada as well as the United States. Um, folks that sell anywhere from a small volume of used and do all the way up to a, a lot of vehicles that are sold and then from the different departments. But one of the things that we like to do um, in my profession is kind of get into the idea of attitude. Uh, and again, thinking about challenges and how you address challenges as an owner, you know, what's your percep perception of how you look at change and how you respond to change? And out of that, we divide uh, uh, the folks who responded to us into two groups. One we call trendsetters. So we'll talk about who those folks are. And we learned some interesting things from those trendsetters. And the other group we call status quo. And there's no good or bad about you know, the different group that you put yourself in. It's how you look at your business and how you look at those changes that Jeff talked about and how you respond to those changes. So just real quickly, we asked the question, uh, and it's a self-selection type of thing, is what's your dealership's approach to change? Are you the first to try something new or are you one of the first to try something new? And we put those folks in a group we call trendsetters. And then if you're kind of in the middle of trying new things, of uh, adapting to change, um, or maybe you're kind of more in the latter part of that, um, we put that, all those folks who answered the question that way into what we call a status quo. There's, again, nothing wrong with whether or not you're a laggard or a late majority. It's like, it's just how oriented you are relative to your market and willingness to adapt change and need to adapt change. So those are our trendsetter and our status quo groups. I think this is gonna be important for you all when we slice this data and we look at, you know, how did behaviorally, what did these folks do when they were um, faced with a lot of challenges? 
All right, what were the challenges that you all told us in 2022? Um, and I'm gonna be bringing up some of the quotes we heard in our interviews, and I really like this one. They had a lot of, we have a lot of serious curveballs that came at us, and that's our job, we handle them. We wake up every morning, uh, we deal the challenges, and it makes us a strong team. Uh, there's one thing that's certain is that, you know, the more you're challenged, and if you're up for it, you're gonna grow out of that. And that's really what this dealer principle is talking about right now. And that's who all you folks are. You guys are entrepreneurs. You've been doing this business for a long time. You've had to deal with the last couple of years. You're all here today. Um, th I would say that this is the spirit that I'm sure is very prevalent in this room. So I really like this, this quote that this one person gave us. All right, so what were the top three challenges? Number one, shortages. It's no surprise here. And my guess is that um, with the truck industry, we see this in other industries as well. Staffing is the biggest perennial challenge that you folks have faced. And we know, quite frankly, it's in the service tech side of the business. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. The second one was managing parts supply. We were, personally, again, a little surprised at that. But you need parts to fix those trucks. And you know, if you don't have parts, that truck's gonna be out of service. You can't get new trucks to replace the old trucks. So a big bottleneck for you all was you know, where were you gonna get parts to, uh, to work on the trucks and keep your service and parts business going? And then lastly, again, this is 2022, fuel price volatility um, is at the same for 2023. Uh, one thing certain is that um, there's uncertainty ahead. So those are the three challenges you all f faced. Let's look at all the challenges ranked. And this is, by the way, um, the folks who answered the survey, they said it was either extremely or very challenging. So 64% of the group says, Staffing shortage is extremely challenging. Um, part supply, fuel price uh, volatility, those are the extremely top three. But then you look at new inventory um, and inflation, also um, all kind of in the same place, so also extremely or very challenging. Um, employee burnout, that's an interesting one. Uh, and I, I don't know how much you folks are thinking about that employee burnout, but it's probably been pretty tough, as it's been tough on you all, it's probably been tough on your folks as well. Um, we we're gonna come back to this notion of employee burnout and how you can think about that and maybe you know, get a little bit more behind that to keep folks you know, motivated and happy in the job that they're in. Uh, use inventory, we know you sell, sell more than, than new, so it hasn't been as much of a challenge. Complex technology and trucks, that's going to be probably more of a challenge as we go forward. And then you can go and see the rest of the list, OEM compliance, you know, I think you guys are doing well there, that seems to be the, the opinion, et cetera. So let's talk a little bit about staffing. And it, it's really interesting because uh, you guys are competing for, I'm gonna talk about service tech, uh, and you guys are competing with a number of industries for the type of person who wants to go into this trade or continue in this trade. Uh, it isn't, obviously it isn't truck, it's auto, it's, it's, it's boat, it's a lot of different areas. We did a job seeker survey uh, a couple years, about a year ago I would say, in trying to understand, quite frankly, um, who would want to be a service tech? What is it they're looking for? What kind of person um, would want to take on that career? And we learned a couple different things. Um, number one, you know, the folks that would like to do this are people that like to get their hands dirty. They like to solve problems. Um, and the other thing which is really interesting is they like to make money. Um, and so when we put the kind of salary out in front of these job seekers, we didn't get a lot of folks say, I, I, I want to do that, that job. So I'm showing you guys the, uh, the average rate, I'm not sure what you, you, know, you pay, it's based on the, the market that you're in, but um, if staffing is a problem in the service tech business, uh, then that's something to think about. The, the challenge that you've got here, aside from finding folks that wanna go into this job, is that there's people that are retiring. These master mechanics are, are leaving the business. And on top of that, there's an increasing demand for more mechanics. And as I said, you're, de you're not only just competing within with, for your for a truck mechanic, you're competing for an auto mechanic or other mechanics. So, you know, there's a growing demand for mechanics. And again, we're getting the sense from that job seeker survey that, you know, we don't, we don't have as many folks looking for that type of job. Now, one good news thing on the horizon, which, you know, you may want to think about in your recruiting and uh, efforts is that as trucks become more complex, we're moving from possibly a guy that likes or a gal that likes to turn a wrench into somebody who's becoming more of a software technician. And we know some of the OEs are spending time trying to appeal to that kind of person who wants to really, you know, it's more like, I want to work with um, cool computer stuff. Because that's where I believe trucks are going and the 
so when you think about the folks that you're looking for, that may be a way of appealing to them as well. I thought I'd put up a couple slides just that, that related to um, where folks are thinking with regards to truck sales. Uh, as you can see, the dark green line uh, is inflation, and when the feds come in and stepped on the stepped on the brakes really hard, and of course inflation, at least according to this chart from the Federal Reserve, it's come down. I just recently saw um, something come out from the U.S. Economic Advisors that uh, inflation is the lowest it's been in two years, but to Jeff's point, you know, how does the Fed really manage that? And that's a difficult thing to do. Um, but nevertheless, uh, rates are high. Um, folks are starting to back away from buying new trucks. They're going to be potentially sitting on their hands more and making do with what they've got. And you can see that, of course, in this chart here that shows truck sales literally cratering. All right, um, so we've talked about the challenges. Let's look at what you all did to address the challenges. Uh, all right, from left to right, uh, I've got fancy with a graph. Um, so again, this is uh, the percent of folks who did, who did this type of thing. Um, so for example, 61% uh, of you all um, made a change in price, raised the price. Most, one of the most profitable years ever for the truck industry. Um, so great move there, you can't argue with that. And of course, reducing fr floor costs. So the idea is, you know, focus on profitability um, and the results are there. Uh, again, I looked at ATD results just recently and, you know, a banner year for the business. Um, opening up new sources of inventory, you need to get the trucks. If you can get the truck, you can sell the truck. And of course, if you're selling the truck, you're selling the truck as MSRP. Um, so that's the second strategy that folks went after. Um, hiring practices, we talked about staffing shortages before. Um, and so a lot of folks looked for different ways to find new people. They went to the vocational tech schools, they went to the high schools, they went to the community colleges, try and talk up the idea of becoming a, a mechanic. Um, I recently saw something, and this is on the auto side, which I find really creative. Um, and it's a partnership with a, a group called Vehicles for Change, where they're going to folks coming out of prison, this is in Maryland, and training folks that had recently been incarcerated to learn how to be service techs. It's creative, it's something to think about. So uh, investing in training in support of new truck technologies. Interestingly enough, 40% of the folks that we heard from said we're investing in, we're looking uh, out to the horizon and investing in our training our people to learn how to work with these new truck, truck technologies. Um, and then it goes down from there. Um, OEM partnerships is, um, is there, 22%, uh, one out of five, forging the stronger OEM partnerships, good idea. Um, I think this is very interesting, and we're going to see more of this as I talk a little bit more about how these uh, changes worked out. But using photos and videos to estimate service recommendations, one out of five, and very similar, uh, mobile repair order and uh, review authorization, a little bit less. But again, uh, some folks are leaning into this type of idea and making it easier for their customers to get uh, service efficiently. Um, so to that point, Let's come back to our trendsetter and status quo uh, groups and see behaviorally how folks implemented uh, change to address the challenges. So right off the board, you can see both groups um, raise price. But interestingly enough, the status quo, that was more of a strategy for them than the trendsetters. Now the next thing that comes down, and I noticed that trendsetter uh, group, 50% said, we're going to invest in new technologies. We're looking out at the horizon at these, at what's coming. Um, so half those folks said, we're, we're going to implement that change. Uh, on the status quo side, um, those folks leaned in on finding new sources of inventory. Um, once again, uh, interestingly enough, changes in hiring practices, that was something that the trendsetters leaned into. Uh, and you can see it's pretty much similar for the status quo, the, the, the trendsetters leaned in a little bit harder. So those are. There's similarities and differences between the two groups, and I think it's just really interesting, and you'll see this um, really play itself out in this graph, where with the exception of raising price, which is on the far left side, um, that change in pricing strategy, which really was a big one for the status quo group, that every other bar, which is the blue bar, is something that the trendsetters lean to more. Um, I find one really interesting, which is that enhanced digital commerce technologies and the trendsetters really jumped on that idea is to make it easy for their customers to, um, to be able to work with their business. So uh, 
it's, it's interesting that they did that, opening up new sources of parts inventory. Again, almost across this chart, the trendsetters behaviorally did what they said attitudinally is the way they run their business. So we're going to find out now, like, given that you had the challenges, you address the challenges with certain actions, um, how well did these work out? Uh, and I'll just kind of throw out a couple of different quotes that you guys could absorb and, and say, you know, that's, that's interesting that these folks found this out. Here's a dealership that, again, invested in training. Um, they want to keep, they want to upgrade their people. They want to make sure that they're leading edge. They want to be all over that to the customer. Another fun market research technique that I love. Uh, with the 134 folks that responded to our survey, uh, we asked them, okay, what was the outcome? And we harvested all those comments that folks entered into the, our little research tool. And these are the words that jumped out. This is kind of the thematic things that we learned from. And of course, the biggest word there is customer. Everybody focused on the customer. The customer's first. That's the business you're in. The other thing I find that's really interesting in there is change. And in fact, increased change are pretty much equivalent as far as size. The bigger the word, the more we saw this in the comments that came back to us. So customer and increased change. Parts, parts was a big one. We saw that in, in the challenges that you all fo focused on. Sales, service, um, improvement, positive. These are the words that really came out um, from the comments that we got. I think it's, let's kind of unwrap this word cloud and see actually what we, what we learned from individuals that contributed to this word cloud. Right. Notice making small changes have made a rather decent improvement in certain areas. We've been able to hire new people. We've been able to retain these folks. Um, and we see a difference in the bottom line with our pricing strategies implemented. So again, taking care of people, getting new people on board, and making those pricing changes had a positive out outcome for this dealer. Customer. We let the customer decide how they want to buy. Transparency. We were honest with uh, our customer with the supply chain issues. Um, we were up front. We talked about the obstacles. We got them on our side. We told them when we could service their truck or when we get them a new truck. That idea of putting the customer first and being very transparent and honest with the customer. Parts availability within, uh, has definitely been a problem. We've talked about that. It's interesting. Um, this dealer went ahead and did some offer purchasing to have a, their own parts supply. Uh, and it probably worked out for them, but there's some risk involved as prices change and that they may be a little bit overstocked on, on parts, um, so the story isn't quite over with yet. Um, interesting enough, margins, you know, we know this margins have greatly increased with trucks of all types. Uh, inventory supply is a problem, we know this. Um, if you can get a truck, you can sell it. We've seen an increase in profitability. Um, it's been a great year, but labor costs, insurance, labor rates have gone up as well. Now that there's potentially a contraction coming on, you know, how do we deal with these costs that we've incurred? We're trying a team-based approach to how we work on, uh, how we work on uh, service repairs. Rather than just doing one per having one person uh, do the job, I mean, let's get a team of folks that work on the truck and that way we learn from each other, we build skills. It's a great idea. We also build teamwork. I think it's fantastic. All right, so we're moving over from generally what happened to specifically what were the impact of making these changes. So we're first going to talk about the operational impacts. But number one, the biggest operational impact was uh, investing again in these new truck technologies, but also um, investing in being ready for uh, EVs. Now, we asked folks, you know, what the percentage of sales that they forecast uh, were going to be in EVs, and it was all over the place. I mean, of course, that depends on what kind of truck you're selling, the market that you're serving, and all that. Uh, the average was 5% um, of uh, sales were going to be EV in 2023, but I can tell you there were a lot of zeros that came back, and there were other folks that said 25%. Um, so we're seeing some of that in that data that shows up. That there's some folks that are really leaning in to be able to support EVs, and probably the, the, the lower lower size trucks. Um, open up new source of inventory, uh, big operational impact if you could do that. Interesting enough, photos, again, coming back to that, photos uh, and videos to help with service, 
big operational impact, probably a very positive one. We'll look at that in a minute. Um, changing in pricing strategies, transforming from sales to improving uh, the experience for the customer, um, changing in hiring practices, et cetera. Uh, and I, again, I mentioned mobile repair order. All right, um, so now what I'm showing you, again, a bit of an eye test, is the green bar is a high operational impact, which we just looked at. The gray bar is, was it a high financial impact? So in some cases, for example, investment in, in supporting new technologies, very high operational impact. It took a lot of work to be able to train folks to um, have them be able to do this, but not so much of a financial impact just yet. Um, but conversely, uh, that investment in battery-powered trucks, definitely a high operational impact, and it probably costs a lot of money to be able to get to do that. So high financial impact as well. Um, uh, down at the bottom side of this, we can see that opening up new parts supply inventory, um, operationally not a big impact, but financially, if you could get those parts, if you could warehouse them, definitely a big financial impact. All right, um, so that was 2022. Uh, what were the challenges? How'd you address them? Um, generally, what happened? What were the operational and financial impacts? All right, now we're going into 2023. What are you gonna do about them? What changes that you made in 2022 do you plan to keep in 2023? What additional things you're going to do? And then what help do you need from the, your OEM partners and your DMS suppliers? Change is always challenging, but it makes us strong, right? I think that's what we heard already. Uh, Technology is changing all the time. Sometimes it's small, sometimes it's big, but we have to be ready for it. I bring you back to that idea of the trendsetters. All right, um, highest impact that you all thought was gonna happen in 2023. Staffing is still gonna be an issue. Again, um, I encourage you all to go to the uh, human resources session in the next couple of days and you know, pick up some tips from those folks. Um, dealers still feel like they're not prepared to deal with uh, this. Well, excuse me, I'll put up the, uh, um, whether or not you're prepared to, to deal with these changes. And folks are still not feeling like they're prepared to deal with these staffing shortages. But the other one which is really interesting is that employee burnout one. Um, Folks are not prepared to deal with that. Now we did a, uh, a study for our friends over in the auto side that we call friction points, um, which is wanting to hear from the different department heads what was causing you to keep from doing your job well. What could we do to improve your, uh, something within the process to make your job easier? And we learned a lot from that friction point study. Um, and if we don't address the friction points, that's gonna make the job harder and that's gonna to lead to burnout. Um, and I would encourage you, you know, when you, after the session, when you think about some of the things that you learned, one of the things you may wanna do if you haven't done it already is spend time with each one of your department heads and ask them what's getting in the way of you doing your job well. What are those friction points that are keeping you from being successful? And by doing that and addressing those friction points, not only can you um, potentially reduce that employee burnout, which will, if not addressed, will lead to more staffing shortages, but also, interestingly enough, could maybe lead to fewer folks that you need at the dealership. So uh, the friction points idea is a really good one, and that could address that employee burnout, the one that right now people are saying they're not uh, prepared to address. Volatile interest rates, Jeff talked about that. There's not much we can do about it. It's gonna do what it's gonna do. Um, you know, certainly it's, it's slowing down truck sales, uh, and you have to think about, again, with the idea of maintaining profit, what do you do about reducing expense, how do you maintain prices, can you maintain prices, um, those types of things. On inflation recession, uh, as Jeff mentioned, this is the most forecast recession that we've ever seen. Um, will it happen? Uh, bring you back in a couple of months and find that out. Um, but I'm kind of on your side as well. <laughs> so those are the challenges you all think uh, you're gonna be seeing in 2023. And those are, how prepared are you to deal with those challenges? All right, um, so what are you gonna keep as far as what worked and what are you gonna add to your, um, your uh, plans for 2023? Almost everything that you all folks did in 2022 worked out. And so it's really a lot of more of the same, um, those types of things. And then, you're going to add additional things to that. You're gonna bring in things that worked and you're gonna to build to that. 
Managing profitability is still a big focus item. All right. Um, lastly, uh, what, can you, what can you get from the OEM? What kind of help do you need from the OEM? And what type of help do you need from CDK and other suppliers? From the OEM, interesting enough, it's like we, and by the way, training, and that's why you're all here, training is the name of the game. Training is the theme. I know you're looking for training from the OEM uh, and how you can adopt to the rules. Um, simplifying sales and service, we talked a little bit about friction points. How do you make it easier? How do you make it better? Talk to your department heads. Um, there's some great solutions in making sales and service easier. Uh, so those are some of the things that, that uh, both the OEM and CDK can help you with. Uh, certainly you want a lot of training from us. Uh, we have CDK University. Um, John Purdy, who's going to be talking about how to deal with change, is also the head of CDK University. So you may want to talk to him about how you can get some training for your team as you hire them or as you grow these folks. Um, and then integrating digital re uh, commerce technologies. One last thing I, I thought I'd bring up. Um, and that is, again, in our final set of interviews that we had with dealers, as we asked them specifically, what would you like from CDK? Uh, we also recently have done a uh, heavy truck product features survey, which we've also given back to uh, our product folks. But we, we heard this from one dealership, um, pretty large dealership in a big urban area, looking for some additional help in reporting and custom dashboarding. Um, and I think that you folks probably feel the same way you know, we, we have the data and we need to deliver it to you in an easier way, uh, and we think that we will be doing that very shortly. So, what are the key takeaways that I hope you guys get from this presentation, other than read the book? Uh, number one, over the last year, not having enough, uh, it's all about shortages, not having enough vehicles, not having the people, um, not having the parts, dealing with constraints. That has been the issue for 2022. Uh, how do you deal with them? Expense reduction, making price changes, increasing price, um, bringing in investment to support the future in new truck technologies, um, and a strong focus on customer transparency and making it easier for the customer. Mobile repair order, um, photos and videos for service, um, enhanced digital commerce technologies, uh, reducing friction points. Those are the strategies that were most successful in dealing with the challenges. Number three, uh, we learned from our trendsetters, and quite frankly, everybody had to adopt to the change. You had no choice. It was one of the, one of the most difficult periods that probably all of us have gone through in, in our lifetime. Um, but leaning into change made you stronger. And we have some folks, uh, and we've seen this in other industries we study as well, that the folks who really embrace change and really lean into change actually come out better. Um, so I encourage you all to think about the, you know, the idea of the philosophy of your dealership. Um, how do you look at change and how do you adapt to change uh, and, and embrace change? And again, I, I say that with a caveat because again, I understand that your markets, that you're dealing with different markets and so you have to think about the market and think about how you want to respond to that market as, a, as it relates to the degree of changes you can implement within your dealership and in your market. Um, dealerships feel they're least prepared to dealing with staff, with people. We kind of get it with the technology. Um, I would say that we could probably do a little bit more work on process. Um, and I gave you an idea about friction points, about talking to your folks and finding out how to make their jobs easier. Um, but staffing is a, a challenge. Finding people, growing people, mentoring people, keeping people, paying people the right amount. That's the where you're, I believe you folks are least prepared. And then lastly, looking to um, how the OEMs can help you and how a company like CDK can help you. Um, if you have a staffing challenge, if you've got new technologies on the horizon and you're trying to adapt to change, you're trying to adapt to new technologies, you're trying to deal with EVs, um, it's leaning on those partners and helping train the folks, looking at the technologies that maybe a company like CDK has that can make sales and service easier, faster, save headcount, save money. That's what you're looking for from your OEM and from folks like us. And with that, as Jeff mentioned, it's six o'clock on the nose. It's time for dinner and drinks.